in television, the form you write is in is the form that's going to get made, um, really. And when we started writing miniseries, that was the, the producible and saleable format. In the case of Brides, what we did on that was different to the, the basic shape of the miniseries that had been around up mm. to that point. We had six individual hours that would each focus very sharply on, on one character and use the other characters to, to support that. Hanson, quick, sit down. Rosemary was the girl that I wasn't. Rosemary was the naughty, bad, sexually wild and adventurous girl who got expelled from school and I was none of those things. I was incredibly rule compliant and a, a good little girl in every imaginable way. So I think I got great pleasure in <laughs> thinking of what fun I can inhabit the mind of the naughty girl. There's nothing ambiguous in the Pope's ruling. The Pope went against the findings of his own commission on birth control. He specifically stated he wasn't speaking ex cathedra, so infallibility doesn't come into it. Oh, been reading up, have we? For me, I suppose the, the guilty secret really is that, that Catherine is the character uh, closest to myself that I think I've ever written, or at least the self that was, existed back then. Educated, intellectual, uh, rather fancied her own uh, view of, of the world and her own philosophy. And it's yeah. probably why I, I, I'm not especially fond of that character. We never, ever sit down and write together. Uh, we always write separate parts. We tend to kind of divide up stories according to character focus. I mean, we did a kind of division of labour on the leaving of Liverpool yeah. where, where John wrote the first half, which was largely the boys' story, and I wrote the second half, which was largely the girls' story. And that's so that we could each write in our own way. We're on the road! Yeah, we're back together! It's a clear division of labour in sympathy. I think what I do varies according to what I'm working on. And it usually starts with a, with a feeling. I suppose I sit with that feeling for a while and then I start to write down everything I know about this story or these people or whatever and it's usually just kind of ragged bits of notes. You know, I know that there might be a scene in a mine shaft. I know that there might be a scene um, in Miller's Point looking at the docks. And then once I've done that, it usually vanishes into thin air and I think, oh my God, panic, I've got nothing. But you usually find that when you start writing, there's actually quite a lot Boys, there. This is Bert. Larry, Purse, Sykes, Singlet. Singlet? Yeah, he's never off his back. That's O boy. Oh boy. Bert wants to join up. We'll see how he goes, eh? You want a cup of tea? Yeah. So. Then I usually get a talisman of, of some sort with road from Karain, I had a lock of wool, a very fresh lock of wool that's, which still smelt of lanolin and I had it by my computer for years. <laughs> when you're actually writing, you become particularly sensitised to incidents or people or moments or images that are somehow of value to what you're writing. I quite often walk around writing in my head and I will see things happening with people on the street or something and go, I'll have that. There were two phases to the research of Liverpool. There was the um, learning about the literal historical sociological facts of what happened to about 100,000 children from England being torn from their homes and scattered across the world. The second phase of, of the research was designed really to make us more comfortable with the idea of writing in a, a type of speech with which we were not naturally familiar. So you are Going to uh, contemporary Liverpool and spending some time there and meeting lots of kids and just getting to talk to them and listening to them. Do you want to baby? Uh, we absorbed, you know, by osmosis a whole lot of stuff that then, then gradually came out in the writing. Mm. Then Cult cultural attitudes sense of place, 
sense of lived history, I suppose. I set out, you know, very much kind of guided by the idea that to make this story palatable it had to be an adventure of some kind. But the more I tried to write it, the more what I told myself I wanted to do just didn't sit with the real research and I just eventually came to the conclusion that I would have to deal with this, you know, terrible, dark material that was at the centre of the <gasps> centre of the story. In spite of that, uh, those dark elements, um, writing Liverpool was, is in fact the happiest experience I've had as a writer and I think the easiest. There is nothing uh, more exciting in the writing process than when the material actually starts to take over and tell you this, this is the story that, that this just has to be. I remember when John first talked to me about this story, I s distinctly remember him saying, this is another crime against the working class. I've written and written. You knew I was coming back. But what have you done with Lily? Where is she? Your daughter's been adopted, Mrs Omara. We had some trouble tracing you, despite help from the police. They seem to have some knowledge of your, uh, your line of work. You haven't told Lily any of this? If there is something that you either passionately want or, or passionately believe needs to be ventilated, then television drama is going to do that, not necessarily better, but it will be better disseminated than just about anything else. And so I suppose I feel some urge to not fill kind of precious television time with spack filler. I feel the need for there to be content that in some way holds a mirror up or asks questions about what's going on in the world. <laughs>